Watching some old TV shows, I noticed something funny. For most of TV's history, homosexuals were no laughing matter. Homosexuality is, in fact, a mental illness. For decades, gays on TV were not allowed to be funny, and when they were funny, they had to pretend to be straight. Even Paul Lind played a straight man with a wife. Hello, dear. How goes the rat race? The rats are winning. <laughs> what a lucky gal. But it's not like that anymore, so I started wondering, what changed? When did TV first permit joking while gay? So I've been combing through sitcoms, and no surprise, a lot of older shows laugh at gay rather than with gay. Baby doll. <laughs> Get it? Gays are gross. But then I saw something else. Some sitcoms actually have some really great gay episodes long before you would expect them to. Check out this 1971 episode of All in the Family. Archie thinks he knows what gay people are. I never said a guy who wears glasses is a queer. A guy who wears glasses is a four eyes. A guy who is a fag is a queer. <laughs> but then Meathead finds out that one of Archie's friends is gay, even though he's a macho football player. I don't mind Steve. His camera store is just down the street here, and he only comes in for a drink once in a while on his way home. Besides, he don't, uh, camp it up, you know? Archie refuses to believe it, but... But he thinks that you're the... I can't even say it, you Steve. He's right, Arch. Huh? <laughs> and after that, Archie has a lot of feelings. I'll see you later, pal. <laughs> well, if that's the punch of a fruit. <laughs> yeah. Mostly, he feels denial, which is how a lot of Americans felt about gays living next door in 1971. But look at this episode of M.A.S.H. from just a year later. A young soldier tells Hawkeye that he's gay. Well, Doc, two guys have got beat up in my outfit. One colored and, uh, one homosexual. So you're a Negro. And then the cast has to decide whether that's a bad thing or a none-of-their-business thing. Margaret, trust me. Perversion is one of the things we're fighting against. You mean Private Weston? That nice boy? Well, that's what I understand from some very reliable gossip. You guys. Condemning somebody for something that's his own business. Look me in the eye, Trapper John McHypocrite, and tell me there isn't something in your past you wouldn't like to keep buried. It's not exactly a positive depiction, but there's something important happening. At least one character defends the gay guy. Now, let's jump ahead to Jody on Soap in 1977. Here's a main character who is not only openly gay, but he's part of the family. He's smarter than all the crazy people around him, and he's a great dad. Oh boy, Wendy. It was so much easier when I didn't know anything about you. Because now that I've seen you, and now that I've held you, I never want to <laughs> let you go. No. Jody is groundbreaking, but how's his sex life? Not so great. His closeted boyfriend leaves him, and after that, he mostly has sex with women. But I'm gay. That's debatable. <laughs> of course, this is not a show with both feet planted in reality, so there's a bit of fantasy going on here. Look at that, a fruit fly! <laughs> Now look at this fascinating episode of Cheers, 1983, The Boys in the Bar. Diane reveals that there are gay men somewhere at Cheers, and everyone freaks out trying to identify them. Could uh, we have a couple of beers, please? You bet. Patty tickler. There's a clash between those who don't want Cheers to turn into a gay bar and those who don't think it's anyone's business who drinks there. All right, we're all agreed then, huh? Sammy tells these guys to leave. We don't go to Clancy's, am I right, Sammy? Right, sounds uh, good. Yes, good. Just like on M.A.S.H., it's the straight characters, not the queer ones, who have anything to say about it. The gays have a couple lines, and by the end of the episode, they're quite visible, but we don't hear much from them. So at this point, we're present on TV, we're just not allowed to speak too often.
still, I love this episode. It's very funny, very fair to everyone's point of view, and it reminds me why Diane is a role model I look up to. That was the noblest proposition you've ever dangled. <laughs> The Golden Girls did a couple of gay episodes, but my favorite is Sister of the Bride, 1991, when Blanche is upset to learn that her brother Clayton is marrying a man. You might have seen the famous clip where Sophia changes Blanche's mind about her brother. Why did you marry George? We loved each other. We wanted to make a lifetime commitment, wanted everybody to know. That's what Doug and Clayton want, too. It's a wonderful scene, but more importantly, Clayton actually has lines on this show. He tells Blanche that if she can't accept him, he'll cut her out of his life. What did you mean when you told me that you could accept my being gay? Did you mean it was okay so long as I was celibate? It was okay so long as I don't fall in love? Doug is a part of the family now, my family. And if you don't like it, then you don't have to be a part of my family. That's harsh, but it's the right decision for him to make. TV is showing that gays have feelings, and talk, and do things. So, that's nice. What you're seeing in these episodes is gay people gradually gaining a voice. We go from a dismissed rumor on All in the Family, to a mostly off-camera hypothetical on M.A.S.H., to safely sexless on Soap, to an ever-present mystery on Cheers, and then being a partnered part of the family on The Golden Girls. And that matches how the country felt about homosexuality, which is probably why it helped to deal with it through laughter on sitcoms. Now, I know I missed a bunch of great gay episodes of shows like Mary Tyler Moore and Maud and The Love Boat, and some not-so-great ones of Charlie's Angels and WKRP and The Love Boat, and these are just American shows. We didn't even talk about the great camp tradition in England, and other countries have had their own ways of dealing with this. I love talking about this stuff, so I want to hear about the episodes that mattered to you. You can tweet at me, at Matt Baum, or leave a comment on this video. And hey, if you like this video, you might like my podcast, The Sewers of Paris, that's full of revealing personal stories about how entertainment changed the lives of gay men. You can subscribe here on YouTube for more videos, and check out my book, Defining Marriage, that's an intimate glimpse into the lives of people who fought for marriage equality over the last 40 years. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to figure out where Anthony from Designing Women fits into all this.